Chief Mr. Wasses was one of the primary signatories of Treaty 6. He was also known as the Iron Buffalo of the Plains because he provided sustenance for his people, he protected his people, and he was a forward thinker. We always pay tribute to his forward way of thinking, supporting but also providing for our people. The scary part for me is that we don't, if we don't take the time to truly educate our children and to show that they have a linkage to their Nehewik ways, which is the Mistawas's, you know, tradition and ancestral ties do we have to our people, then they lose sight of who they are. There was a lot of, of underlying issues that got us to where we, we are today. We're very concerned about the, the outcomes of our kids that were graduating high school. What was happening is that our kids would have daycare, pre-K, and then go into the kindergarten to grade 8 system, and then we'd lose our kids. So grade 9 to 12 students, we wouldn't have them here. They weren't graduating with an academic requirements to go on to higher learning, right? They were just being pushed through a system, and that was it. Case in point, you know, we, we started out with about, say, 70 kids annually. By the end of October, 50% of those kids will no longer be there. By the beginning of April, we'd have less than 20% of our kids in school. They didn't seem to have a linkage to the system, a belonging or a voice. We never had access to curricular development. We never had um, the ability to incorporate our traditional values as Naoc people. We never had the ability to use our elders, you know, in the school for counseling and guidance. And that was just a void. It was a void in our whole, you know, circle of life when education is, is considered. We realize that this relationship, you know, it's not working. We felt it was time to do something positive. We began the process of finding ways and means to, you know, to build a school. How do we, how do we build a school in a short time frame? It was going to require a lot of hard work, dedication, negotiation, uh, preparation, but also making sure that we had the right people in place to really get this off the ground and moving. So our economic development CEO, Robert Daniels, he actually brought 320 to our table and says, you know what, I've come across, you know, this uh, modular type building structure, maybe give them a call, see what they can do. 320 was basically a godsend in the sense that they had, you know, this modular notion of how to build facilities. So within a heartbeat, I guess, we began discussions. So the decision was, okay, this is what we want to build. Can it be done? What's the cost? And how are we going to get there? Well, obviously, the, the biggest challenge is always financial, financial, you know, um, support. But like I say, we have a very aggressive council, and uh, we very seldom take no for an answer. We find ways and means to get things done. We never look back. We couldn't look back because our kids' future was dependent on it. I was told, what do you need to have in order to have these kids, you know, where we want to get them educated? And I said, well, we definitely want to make sure we understand that the math and sciences are crucial. Technology is, you know, forefront. We want to make sure that their classrooms are bright, beautiful, conducive, so that they have a place as theirs. That they're treated like actual high school students, so they're going to be given like a cafeteria, some place that's going to be theirs. And they're given the opportunity to be educated in an environment that really is meant for education. 320 did have a huge task on their hands. Like, I, I, I pity them, but at the same time, um, they did a fabulous job for us. So, I, I'm very happy with that.
This whole project, I think the highlight for me was the first day we brought the kids into this building. I just stood back and I just watched their expressions, watched them roam, just kind of get touched things and, you know, and their light, eyes lit up and they were talking about what's this and they're just all like so excited. You know you've done something right. It's not just a humdrum, you know, modular that comes together. It's, it's innovative, you know, it's, it's eye-catching, it's appealing, you know, it's enticing to come and visit and listen to what's going on in, in the school. And I think that's the most uh, positive thing is that our kids are realizing that it's, it's challenging, you know, to get to where you want to be, but you have a school that's welcoming, you have staff that they know, you have a community that's receptive to growth. It all fits, it all fits. And the more that we can rally around our kids to give them the best tools possible, and that's not only in education, but also just in life, the better outcomes that they're going to have. And for us as a community, that's success. Because those will be the next individual sitting here. That will be your next director of education, your next chief. And that's our hope. Our hope is that we give them the tools necessary so that they can continue to lead our people.